So here is my hair fully fluffed out. Here is a picture of my hair not fluffed out. Which one do you like? Do you like it fully fluffed out? Or do you like it with the really defined curly Q curls? Let me know down below. So hello and welcome to Dommy Tries This. I hope you brought your cuppa. This is, it says, it says, finally published and all I got was this coffee mug. And here on the front, it says, writer at work. I actually did pick this up when I got published for the first time. And I mean paid published. I don't mean freebie publishing. Freebie publishing is actually fairly easy to get through. Um, the paid publishing is a little harder because they're paying money for what they're putting in. That's not to say that people who do free magazines uh, or free e-zines and don't pay the writers which, by the way, we will not go into that rant, but there is a rant behind all that. Uh, but those who don't pay their writers uh, aren't picky, but I find that if you're putting out money, you're going to be a little bit pickier about what you have. And I was really, really proud of this particular publication. For one, the story was one that I really, really loved, and um, it was called Into Stone. And also, the publication that paid for it was run by Edward McFadden, who is a big name in the publishing industry. And it was for his briefly, um, brief, I don't think it's still out, a brief uh, magazine, Cosmic Speculative Fiction. It was published in 2004. And when I got my paycheck and the letter, I put the letter in a uh, frame for my wall. I took a picture of the the money that I got, the check that I got, and uh, then I bought this coffee mug for me. So this was my treat for finally getting published back in 2004. I haven't been published in a while since then. I haven't actually been trying. There's just been other things on my mind. Anyway, so that's the story behind this coffee mug. This coffee mug is from 2004, which makes it about 16 years old. The tea that is in this coffee mug is another Adagio. Adagio tea. This one is for Naomi. This is from the Le Leviathan Wakes series. And this one has pomegranate green, white monkey, and rose hips. And it's a beautiful tea. Uh, unlike the other teas that I've recently tried, this does not have a black tea base. It has a green tea base, which is really nice. And you can see the rose hips in there. So I'm really hoping I like this one because um, the other two, even though they were characters I adore, they were black teas and I don't like black teas. So let's go ahead and give this a sip and we will get started. Smells good. Now it has been sitting for a minute. Um, my daughter tried to start dinner and then I had to tell her to wait, unfortunately. So it's been sitting here for a few. It's probably about at full, but we're gonna go ahead and give her a sip and get going here. That is definitely a unique tea. From Right now, it's almost like I over-sugared it. So something in those flavors is really sweet to begin with. There's an interesting taste on the back end. It's not horrible. It's not, it's, it's, it doesn't taste bitter like black tea. Um, I'm not sure I would repurchase it, but you know what? We'll wait till the end of our thing and we will discuss it. We will see if I'm... I'm on the fence then. So today I'm doing another foundation type video. It has been a while. Uh, I don't I don't buy a new foundation like every week or whatever. So uh, I am actually going by a few samples that I've gotten like in a, I think I got one in a Sephora order. I know one came from an Ipsy bag and then there are two that were purchased. I purchased one and my daughter purchased another, and I do not know. The other one probably came from an Ipsy bag as well. So we are gonna start with this Pearlice Perfect Glow BB Cream SPF 30. This was a surprise. It runs a little orange in the undertone on me, but the coverage is light enough for it not to be a problem. So even though it does run orange, even though it looks a little orange on me, 
let's put this on here. Because the coverage is so light, because it smooths out so well, there you can see it. Um, you can see what happens there. There's still that orangey cast, but it's not, it's not like it's a full heavy foundation um, where that orange cast is kind of taking over. My normal skin tone is actually showing through a little bit and that reduces that oranginess of it. Um, it's very lightweight, so I didn't feel it on my skin from the get-go. Despite being lightweight, it has some de decent coverage. The heavier end of light to the lighter end of medium, I was really kind of surprised at that too. Did need to use a bit more than I expected, but not too much more. It smooths out an uneven skin tone, which I do actually tend to have. I have a redness up in here. I have, um, have some... I want to say patchiness, but it's not quite patchiness to my skin. I just have some places where my skin is just not um, an even tone, if that makes sense. Uh, for those of you with uneven skin tones, you understand exactly what I'm saying. The finish is nice, powdered and unpowdered, very little tackiness, dried down fairly quickly, and it stayed pretty comfortable, but within three hours was gathering around my nose and my creases and disappearing all around my nose in general. This is my oily zone. So unless it's made for oil, a lot of foundations just poof, they just go away. They gather in the crease of my nose. They gather in my creases around my eyes. So those are things I look out for. Uh, so those were the downsides to this particular foundation. I don't see this standing up to a full day. I don't see it standing up to six to eight hours or 10 hours. Uh, however, for the three hours for filming, it was very nice. Um, it doesn't mix well with the Vichy and becomes patchy. Fortunately, it does play, it does layer over itself fairly well. So it's nice, but not worth the $35 in my opinion. It is not a foundation I would be inclined, a BB cream I'd be inclined to buy again. I'm actually not much into BB creams. Um, I find most of them just they can work on my skin in terms of skin tone, but that's usually about it. Uh, but if you're looking for a BB cream, this is a nice BB cream. It just, I don't think it would last long, particularly if you have oily skin. It does say oil free, moisturizing, natural looking. I will say it is natural looking coverage. Uh, it does have a nice finish. I did enjoy the finish. Um, it just didn't last that long on my skin, particularly on my nose. And when I used it, I did do the things that I do to, that would make my foundation last. And what I do there is first I pat off all excess moisturizer, um, and then spray my, my T-zone area with a setting spray, uh, and then I go ahead and put on my um, my primer. And when I am putting my primer on my eyes, I also apply some of that primer on my nose in specific because that's where I will lose it the most. And I, so I did all of that and it still was fading off my nose. So even though it's oil free, I wouldn't say that this is for oily skin. I don't think it would, la it would last less on oily skin than it does on, um, you know, combination or dry skin. It's a beautiful finish. I do plan to finish it up. It just is not something I would repurchase just because of the way it won't, it wears on my nose. So next I have this Milani Screen Queen in 270 Nude Sand. Um, has a medium consistency. The consistency is fine. Let's see if I can just do a little bit out. I haven't used it much. But that's what it looks like. There's that. How that looks. You can see it's just a little lighter. It does oxidize down. But there you can see that in here. The other one's right in here. Um, it's a little more yellow on the undertone than orange. The first problem is that I can feel it on my face from the moment I'm putting it on. It's not horribly heavily, but definitely irritatingly there. I don't like to feel my makeup on my face, which is, I know, kind of weird because, you know, you're wearing makeup, so you're going to, people would assume you're going to feel it on your face. I have, I think I have a cat. 
or something going on in there. I have uh, several foundations that I can wear that I do not feel on my face uh, from putting them on. The second problem is it looks makeup and somewhat patchy on my skin. And the third is that it emphasizes my texture, particularly between my brows and under my eyes and along the upper part of my cheeks, unfortunately. Um, my concealer saved my under eyes, fortunately, but it was gathering around my nose before I even finished putting on my makeup. The finish looked nice on my cheeks, but not much anywhere else. It did stand up to my weepy eyes better than most. I do have, I think I've mentioned several times that my eyes water when I'm putting on makeup a lot of the times. And one of the things that I like about the NYX uh, Born to Glow is that it stays put. This one apparently does stay put a little bit. I've only used it once or twice. I wasn't very happy with it. After all that, however, it worked really well with my Vichy and a dewy setting spray for primer. The coverage is lightened significantly when you put in the Vichy. I do mix that in. Uh, I think I've shown you guys this stuff before. So this is my Vichy Mineral 89. It's like a skin serum. I mix it in. I like to mix it in with my foundations, particularly foundations that do not have a skincare component to them because I don't like the foundation just to sit on my skin and do nothing. So the coverage lightens significantly, uh, but it did build up. It no longer emphasized my texture. The finish was beautiful and not at all patchy, and that makeup -y look disappeared. I still felt it a little bit on my face when I applied it, but that disappeared as it dried down. This will probably never be a favorite, but it is usable. Uh, mixing with the e.l.f. placed it somewhere in the middle without the Vichy and with it, and at all three uses, it looked patchy or not quite right on my nose. So that's the biggest area, again, that I have issues with is my nose. Um, that's because that's where I'm oiliest. So I don't think it's for oily skin. It's okay. Won't be a favorite. Not likely to repurchase. Um, I am debating on whether or not to continue to try it or to let my daughter have it and see if it works for her. I'll probably let her have it and see if it works for her. If it doesn't work for her, then I will try to use it up. But, um, yeah, I won't be a favorite. I won't repurchase it. It's and obviously for my skin and for what I like, it has to be mixed with the Vichy uh, Mineral uh, 89, uh, but um, which is not a problem. I mean, I mix most things with the Vichy Mineral 89, but I mean, the patchiness is an issue, uh, but at least the Vichy helped take care of all the other issues. Um, I would have to say that this is kind of one of those um, middle-of-the-road foundations. It is, I've tried another Milani one, and the other Milani one just was terrible on my skin. Uh, so it is better than that. However, I don't think it's, I don't think it's up to my NYX. I don't think it's up to another one that I'll be sharing with you, with you today. Um, but it's usable. Let's just go with that. It's usable. Would I recommend it? Not really. Especially if you have combination or oily skin. If you have dry skin, it might look a little better or a little different on your skin than it did on mine. Um, my cheeks looked great and my cheeks are dry, but my nose, like I said, was very patchy. So that is kind of a, yeah, no. So another one from Ipsy is the Pure 4-in-1 Love Your Selfie Foundation. This is thick and a bit stiff to buff out. It is lightweight. You don't feel it on the skin, or I didn't feel it on the skin. The shade match was a little better. This is almost gone. I don't know if I'll be... Whoa, don't want to do that. I <laughs> uh, don't want to do that. But there's that one going over a little bit more. I know I'm sort of layering them on top of each other. See, this one is a little bit light on my skin, on my face. That would definitely be too light. However, it does have, doesn't have the orange undertone, the yellow undertone under it. It does seem to blur things nicely. Um, so it's lightweight. I don't feel it on the skin or to the touch, but with full coverage. Nice finish for the most part, but emphasize the texture between my brows. Most foundations do, unfortunately. Uh, and under my eyes, looks a bit dry around my mouth, looks a bit more foundation cakey on my oily nose. Dries down fast with my Mineral 89, it's not much better. Looks makeup-y, though not cakey. So I look like I'm wearing makeup, but it doesn't look like it's caked on, um, which is 
Anyway, the finish isn't as nice and it takes longer to dry and it collected around my nose very quickly. On the plus sides, it was easier to blend out with the Vichy mix, mixed in. I don't know why I do that. It was easier to, to blend out and I had less texture issues. Unfortunately, I think this mixture made me itch. Some combinations just don't work. Something between the two just doesn't cooperate and that can cause certain reactions. So apparently this mixed with my Mineral 89 caused certain reactions and made me itch. I also mix in the Vichy when mixing in the Elf and got that itch then. So this mix causes something in my skin that my skin doesn't like. The Elf did give it a little bit of its finish. As you all know, I like the Elf um, Flawless because it has a beautiful finish. And it tends to impart its finish when you mix it in with another foundation. If you're looking for a beautiful finish and you have a foundation that's almost there, try the Elf Flawless and see what you get. Honest. But the Pure did look still looked heavy and makeup-y. It was a bit patchy and cakey, looked dry around my mouth, emphasized some texture, and oh my god, I felt this on my face for a while. It felt heavy and uncomfortable, gathered around my nose very quickly. So, there are some good things about this, but there are not enough good things for me to even want to finish this. This is a hard no. Um, yeah, no. Just no. It's going to go in my reverse rouge bucket. Yes, I have not. Well, actually, you know what? I'm going to give it to my daughter. That skin tone just might work for her. So this one will go to my daughter and let her see if she likes it along with the Scream Queen. At any rate, so I I don't like um, tossing things out, even if it's even if I've only spent you know those bags. You spent what two dollars on the products and maybe two dollars on the bag. So. But I don't like to, to, to throw shit out if I can help it. So I think I got this one in... Well, that's interesting. You have a two. This one has nothing. I think I got this one with a Sephora order. Um, I've stopped ordering from Sephora. I now order from Ulta. The point system at Sephora was probably one of the few reasons I stayed with it. Ulta has more of what I need and has been less of a dick to its employees. So, anyway. Granted, that was a bit ago, but not that long. Anyway, so this is the YSL All Hours. This is a slightly thinner consistency, but not watery. Uh, let me go over here. Yeah. It has a little bit of oomph to it, so that's what that looks like. The match is pretty good. It's not horrible. It's a hint on the warm side or on the um, orangey, yellowy orange side. It's not like I said, it's not horrible. It's it's definitely much a much warmer foundation than some of the others. It has a light perfumey scent, lighter side of medium coverage, looks a bit makeup-y on my nose. Nose. Other than that, the finish is nice. Creasing between my brows isn't too bad, but creasing under my eyes is worse than I've seen with other foundations. Though dampening a brush and going over it, or a or a uh, sponge, and going over it, going over those areas did help. I don't feel it on my skin. Once powdered, I don't feel it to the touch. This foundation did a lot better with the Vichy mixed in. The finish was prettier and it didn't lose much on the coverage at all. My under eyes looked better as did between my brows. Still looked a bit makeup-y, but buffing it down with a dry sponge. Um, yes, I know it's generally supposed to be damp, but the dry sponge did it. Helped with that and with the remaining texture issues, though I, though it still had some issues on my nose and under my eyes, and looked just as nice powdered. Felt it more on my skin, but liked it much more than without the Vichy, and didn't feel it to the touch. Don't like it enough to pay $54 for it, but it is a, still a very nice foundation. If this were a cheaper, if this were in the 20 to 30 range or the 30 the 35. The next one I have is, is close to 50. This is a, yeah, if this, this was between the 30, 25 to 35 range, I, I might consider it. Um, maybe even 39, because that's what I used to pay for the tart. I don't know if they still pay, have you paying 39. Everything's prices went up. Uh, but, uh, so it's a decent one. I do plan to finish using this. Uh, 
it's not a bad foundation. It's just not one I would repurchase for that price point. So I have to say one of the things that I enjoy doing the foundation hunts, but for the more expensive foundations, <laughs> this is going to sound weird. Uh, for the more expensive foundations, I always want to find something that I like. I always want to find something that I like, but I don't necessarily want to find something that I love because um, of the price points of the more expensive foundations. Uh, my price point is somewhere between, you know, 10 maybe 25 it's really good that's where i'd rather be spending i mean you're talking about something that you're probably well i guess you use it for a whole year for most of them most of mine will last a year if i get a whole ounce um of course i'm not using only one i have several that i rotate but I, you know just being able to get elf for six or eight or whatever it is is really nice because it's a nice foundation and um I do enjoy it, but I can't say that I love it. And that is one of the big concerns that I have when I start trying the more pricey foundations is that I will absolutely love it. And uh, as much as I want to be able to recommend stuff to you guys, I don't want to love things because I don't want to spend more because I absolutely love it. And unfortunately, <laughs> or fortunately, depending on your thoughts, the next foundation I think I'm in love with almost as much as my NYX, maybe a little bit more than my NYX. Uh, haven't tried it with my Vichy Mineral 89, I have to admit. I've only used it a few times, but yeah. And that is the Uoma Say What Weightless Soft Matte Hydrating Foundation. Uh, when I first, when my daughter picked this up for me, because this is like $45 or something, and I wasn't going to spend that kind of money. I'm interested in it, but I, I just, unless we were making more, I didn't want to spend that kind of money. And um, when we first picked it up, I thought, okay, that color's not going to work for me. It's, it looks really off. So, and then on top of that, it is very liquidy. It is like water almost. And um, as you can see that, well, that's looking like it's the same. But I thought it was going to be like too dark or something. So there's that one. It's continuing that same color pattern. As it turns out, when this thing dries down, it dries down in such a way that it doesn't really darken. When it dries down, it doesn't look nearly as orange. And once you put your rest of your makeup on it, it doesn't look as orange. And anyway... <laughs> um, Anyway, really liquidy, which is not a favorite consistency. It blends out to a beautiful, light, but buildable coverage. I was able to get to the lighter side of medium. I have heard others say it's more, more on the medium side, but you could take it to full. I guess I didn't put on that much. I really didn't. It's very lightweight, so I didn't feel it on my face when applying or once it set down, and only felt it slightly when building it up. It sets down quickly and you can tell there's makeup on, but it's a very slight sensation. It's I'm wearing it right now uh, and I don't feel it at all. I mean, I feel the sense of, you know, like humidity sometimes you can sort of feel it, but it doesn't really bother you. It's just, it's just there. That's how this is kind of feeling, but not as heavy. It's just there. I know there's makeup there. I can kind of feel makeup, especially right around my nose, because like the other ones, it's not really, doesn't really seem to work for them. I don't need much for a single layer at all. This thing will last me a while. I think it has a one year. Yep, it has 12 months. So we're gonna be using this quite a bit. Before we open another NYX, we're going to be using this quite a bit. It's really nice finish, both powdered and powdered. Didn't emphasize my texture. My first time I used this, I used it with absolutely no primer. And it was beautiful. It was gorgeous. Which to me is actually interesting because the Uoma actually has supposedly skin care in it. So if I can use it without a primer... Even though it's $45, it saves me a product. I could just use this instead of having to buy the primer that I need for everything else. I mean, it's a thought anyway. So my first use was on skin without primer. It was gorgeous. It stayed comfortable for several hours. My second use 
today's is over a primer combo and it still has a beautiful finish it did show more texture and dryness with my uh, beauty bakery flower powder than with my bad habit powder uh, so it might be a touch powder fussy um, but it's not bad it was easy for me to, to deal with using my facial sprays that I use uh, so it looked a little dry in some areas but those areas when I spritzed them were fine I like it I like it a lot I um, can't afford it but I probably would repurchase this again if I could uh, I like it a lot I, I highly recommend this like most foundations we are having I am having some issues with breakup on my nose and gathering in here but I have that issue with 99% of foundations anyway, or 90% of foundations. It's just the, uh, I think it's just because I've got combination skin. So this area gets oily, particularly in the summer, which we're heading towards. This area is dry and up in here is normal. So I'm going to take off my glasses and I'm going to show you this finish because like I said, this is without the Vichy. I haven't tried it with the Vichy, um, but without the Vichy, there is a little bit of creasing in here. There's not a whole lot. Um, the finish around here is just absolutely beautiful. Nothing looks dried out. We do have a bit more shine on our nose than we should. I don't think any's coming off. No, it's not really coming off. I have a little bit of makeup spots, but there's nothing coming off the nose. It's just a little shinier than um, a soft matte should be because of my oils. Uh, just, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful foundation. It really, really is. I'm just really surprised and really impressed. And um, the other thing is, the first time I used it, when I took it off, like I said, I had no primer on my face. So I washed my face. I just used water. I rinsed, I took all my makeup off, and then I used a rag and rinsed off my face with water. And my skin felt so soft. I didn't have anything on under this. I just had this on. And my skin felt like somebody had just put some moisturizer over it. I was really surprised at that too. So this is a really, I, I'm, I really like it. <laughs> I do recommend it. I recommend you to try. Now you're going to have to take a look because they have like five color families. So you have to find your color families, whether it's Fair Lady or I think I was in the olive and lighter end of olive. And then there's like three others. And then each of those, like um, this one is Honey Honey T1N. So everything in this family is Honey Honey. But what you have to pay attention to is the the letters and the number so this is t1n they have a t2w stuff like that those will tell you whether it's got a neutral warm or cool undertone and then you have to pay attention to where it is in the line so you can see how dark it goes because the honey honey goes from a lighter this is a one so lighter to a darker honey color so that's the way to find it it's a different way to look for your foundation but it's, it's a beautiful foundation i think <laughs> It is very difficult for me to say this, but I think it is actually worth the $45. So uh, honestly, it's it's a beautiful foundation. Uh, it and the NYX and the ELF are probably my top three now. So I have a high end, I have a nice drugstore, and I have a low end drugstore, inexpensive one. Anyway, babbling on, that's it for the day, and I hope you like what you've seen. And if you do like what you've seen, I hope you will subscribe if you are not yet subscribed. If you're subscribed, so many of us. If you subscribe, please hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. I currently upload two days a week, Monday and a Thursday. But we do have bonus videos. We had one recently. We do indie brand openings which I shouldn't be doing, but we do indie brand openings. My son opens his My Geek Box every month, and that is on its way. Hopefully, you'll see that before you see this. And 
Then there is anything you send me. If you choose to, you don't have to, but if you choose to, that would be also be opened as a bonus video, unless you don't want me to. Just let me know. Let me know. Just have to let me know, and I won't do it. Okay. Uh, we're not doing garden videos this year, but hopefully next year. However, if you're interested in any of those, you will need to have that bell clicked because they do not go up on regular upload days. If you're one of my notification squad, check both your bell and your subscription to make sure they're both still active. If you choose not to subscribe, well, you know. I guess I'd understand. I'm kind of a rambly old dragon. I try to fix it, I really do. But at any rate, yes, I'd understand, but I still hope that you'll be back again because you're always welcome here. And when you do come back again, don't forget to bring your cup of tea. All right, so we have been here 30 minutes, or I have been here 30 minutes by the time I get this edited down and take care of where things switched over and all that other stuff. It won't be 30 minutes for you guys, but for me, it's been 30 minutes. Let's give it a sip, and we will get on our way, and then my daughter can go ahead and get to work on dinner because she's waiting. Okay, so I think that taste that I'm getting towards the end of the sip is either the green tea or the white. It's not a bad tea. Um, I am getting some of the sweetness from the pomegranate. I'm not really sure what a rose hip is supposed to. I have rose hips in so many different teas. And anyway, I do like it. Not sure enough. It's enough for repurchase. Probably though. Because I like Naomi and it's nice to have a tea from this set, from this series that I actually really feel like I can drink. So, and I love these little tins. I really want to see what the tins look like for the bigger um, teas. At any rate, that's it. Hope you have a good one.